Well, my name is Simei Kaitawa. I'm 47 years old now. I'm old. I'm not from this island. I came here back in 1999. I'm from the capital, Tarawa. And I, I met my wife over there. Or she met me. Tarawa is so crowded. I, my wife and I decided to come to Christmas Island where there are a lot of, there are more opportunity, job opportunity here. Until now, we have six daughters, no boys. We're still hoping to have boys, but we're getting old. I don't know when we're going to have a boy or not. When we first came here, back in 1999, until now, we are still having that problem, the shortage of food. No, no food, you know. We always ran out of food especially rice, flour, and sugar. We, we are more dependently on this food. As you can see, on this island, we don't have a lot, only coconut trees. That's all we can eat, and fish. But then, these new generations, they don't like to live on coconut and fish. They like to live on rice, flour and sugar. Most time we, we run out of food. There are times when, when everybody is hungry. There are times when everybody's sick because they cannot eat their coconut alone every day. You know, when I first came here, this is, this is the fact. I always see tuna fish around, around this area. You know, just by standing on the, on the shore, on the beach, you can see tuna jumping out of the water. You can still see a lot of birds after the tuna. I haven't seen that for five years. You know what happened? You know, there's a ship over there. That's a fishing vessel. That's, that's the cause of why I haven't seen tuna around, around here anymore. If you want to eat tuna, you have to go very far, far away to catch them. I believe that this fishing boat, fishing vessels from Spain, are, are wiping out our fish, are hunting all the tunas. Whatever they, they catch with that net, they just catch everything. It's not only the tuna inside the net. It goes with a lot of other fishes. And, uh, you know, they don't need other fishes, so they, they throw the fish away. Thousands and thousands of uh, kingfish, thousands and thousands of, uh, of wow, of little uh, undersized tuna, you know. That's sad, you know, they, they, they waste our resources. They deployed our resources, you know. That's sad. That's very sad.
That's uh, my, my beloved, my beloved Erana. <clears throat> the nuns had uh, told me to pray that I always find the right, right wife. Erana was a bit of a tomboy and not really interested in getting married. And <clears throat> she went to work for a Chinese, at a Chinese store in Giso, away from uh, Wagonani. I realized I missed her. And the voice said in my ears, Perry, that is your wife. <laughs> what? That's your wife? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I wasn't interested in getting married then. And then I said, well, yeah. Then I realized then she is. She is. <laughs> That's the one the sister told me about. That great smile, that great smile she has here. Isn't this wonderful, wonderful lady? <laughs> Oh, there's an almanac. It's a Gribas almanac eaten by worms, which gives details of weather, navigation details also. See, these are these are cloud cloud conditions here. I've seen all these different clouds that when being at sea. Eh? A number of them I haven't seen before, but over the centuries they've recorded all these things. This is where we are, right on the tip of this peninsula here. We just come from just come from about here so it's you know it's quite a long island here and the main the main task this is the this is the Royal Engineers Tarsil Road yeah? it goes all the way down to the end of the island if you leave if you leave the main road you get lost in this area here now, these are all, all the lagoons these are the lagoons from the inner roads just all hundreds of lagoons. And the island is not sinking. The sea levels are not rising. That is a pass. It's not true. It's, it's, they're not rising. We know they're not rising. This, you see that, that lagoon here? That's all dry land now. That's all dry land. Used to be a lagoon, we used to catch mullet in there. Now it's all, all these are dry land here. So if anything, this the area of the island is increasing every year. We don't know what, what how much, but it is increasing. Yeah? Why do people say it's sinking? What do you think? Politically it's the right thing to say we can get a little bit more aid money. <laughs> but, <clears throat> maybe we shouldn't say that. <laughs> But in the, in the western and central Pacific, there's been a sea level rise. But Christmas Island, it's, there's no really good solid data. At one point, the sea level actually dropped here. So the sea level rise and fall here is really dependent on the El Nino. You know, it's called the, the southern oscillation. Like Perry said, in the islands, the islands seem to be accreting now. So sand is continually being produced on the reef by animals that graze on the corals and so forth, you know. That sand's deposited on the beach. In these atolls, sand is very rarely lost completely to the ocean. Okay? It's always, it moves around depending on the currents and so forth. So what may be eroding in one area may be building up in another. You know? So often a lot of the studies and the interpretations of sea level rise and erosion and so forth, I think are a little bit, little bit far-fetched because they often, they often measure places what are, which are eroding because they fit the picture that they want to convey that the islands are slowly disappearing, you know, when in fact, the, you know, they don't measure the areas that are accreting, that are building up. A lot of the, the rhetoric and the hype along with global warming, uh, I think is, is geared toward islanders looking for funding, looking for adaptation, funding for adaptation for the future, you know. This is a long-term project we're talking about. It's not an immediate threat. One of the problems is that we haven't been measuring sea level long enough to determine trends. And a lot of these trends may be very long-term trends. For example, sea level on the island here was about a meter higher than it is now, 5,000 years ago. That's why we have a lot of exposed coral. That's been the case everywhere, everywhere in the world. That's 5,000 years. That's long before the Industrial Revolution and greenhouse gases got loose in the atmosphere and created global warming. So that's a natural sort of cycle, right? 
And then there's always the, you know, the uplift and the downwelling of, of oceanic islands as they move across the Pacific in any oceans, really, on these suboceanic plates. It's a good idea, I think, to adapt to it. Adapting to climate change and, and sea level rise here is really difficult in these islands where you go. You know, I mean, the islands are all about six or eight feet above sea level, and there isn't, you can't go to high ground. I mean, the only high ground is the top of the coconut trees. <laughs> so it's really, it's tough to get away. Kiribati does have a, the KAP, it's a Kiribati Adaptation Project, and it's based out of Tarawa, and it's very well funded, and they're trying to come up with, with first off, uh, sea level rise scenarios that, that really will affect the island. And then they're, coming, they're trying to come up with, with ways to prepare for it. One of the things that they're doing is looking at water conservation. Right now we depend on water lenses, which are below the surface now. The, the fresh water table sits atop the seawater table, and we draw fresh water off of that through wells. You know? But if sea level rises, you know, those fresh water lenses might get inundated with seawater, in which case it would pollute, essentially pollute the fresh water supplies that we rely on. And then it's just general, you know, general coastal engineering and be paying attention to what, what you're doing with the land, you know, that's really important if you want to try and, and preserve your lands as long as possible. They uh, basically uh, created a camp of 5,000 servicemen here and it was down in uh, main camp which is about 15 miles up the road from where we're sitting right now and there's still a lot of remnants of that left over and in fact my water tower out here I've got a a uh, steel I-beam that says Operation Grapple on it. You know, it's a little historical piece here at the house. They weren't quite what they'd hoped for. They weren't the big thermonuclear hydrogen bomb blast that they really wanted. You know, they weren't in that, that range. Several series of tests they were carried out here. And they, kind of, they really wanted to join the thermonuclear club, the hydrogen bomb club. It's rather horrible. When they, they, they first did their testing, he's still on the island. And they were, he, he was still in his, sitting in his house. And the doors were ripped off, even, and the windows. And some of them were taken out into, in, out in the sea on ships away from the islands. It was with those people who stayed on the island. <coughs> there, there was a plane flying about, um, communicating back to them through the speakers, and that's, they, ke they kept listening. They were even told that the bomb is finally released from the plane and it's going to explode. They, all, they were aware of that. They're kind of given a choice. During that time, they were given things to cover their ears and eyes with. And especially those, fam those who have big families, they go on ships because they find it hard to put on those things at one time. <laughs> Mm, yes, they were really afraid, frightened, but what else can they do? So they just sit and accept whatever may come. I had a couple of things, I suppose, and money. Ah, no, I don't 
อาจจะอยู่เรื่องเงินจะตายาเลยยายงงจะไปยงงจะยงงอยู่บุอะไรกันก็พูดนี่ยังไงแต่อะไรต่างๆที่พูดนี่มาตั้งยังไงไปเจอร้านที่นี่กันก็จะไปโกวันไหนอยู่นะกันจะจะงงอยู่บุนี่บุกอย่างคงก็ยังยังไงแต่ไม่กันแต่ว่ามาตั้งยี่ยอดาวยี่ตัวบวกยี่มุ่งเจอการบุกบุกมาเลยจะงงมาจากที่ไหนเลยยี่งูดีแต่อาฟ้าเลยนั่นแปลว่าไม่ดีแต่ทางสถาบันการค้าบริษัทอังกฤษเขาเปิดประตูให้คนเข้าไปถามข้อมูลอะไรต่างๆไม่ว่าจะเป็นข้อมูลอะไรต่างๆในประเทศนี้ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการทดลองนิวเคลียร์ที่เกี่ยวกับการ Just brought uh, within the past two years, there's 700 plaintiffs already in this uh, lawsuit, and they're composed of uh, Britons uh, or Brits, uh, New Zealanders, Fiji Islanders who are also here, and I don't know whether any any Kiribati are actually in that suit. Although a couple of people here did get burned by radiation. Some children during that time. Um, called the eyes problems. Yeah, they find it hard to see properly. Mm -hmm. Did the British government help them out afterwards? Don't they have any money? No, not until until these days. The the company that was here doing the big cleanup and stuff, they didn't find any radiation. They find some hazardous materials, and the radiation was mostly in radium dials and some of their gauges and so forth. So there wasn't really any radiation. And one of the uh, directors of that program or managers uh, told me that that uh, they they checked a couple of times with Geiger counters or whatever for radiation around here and found nothing. But then again, they were hired. This company was hired by the Brits, so I don't know. You know whether the guy was, you know, you know I don't know. I, I kind of tended to believe him, you know, but I don't know. You know, I'm I'm sure he didn't want to, you know, blow the whistle on them. Share the best of two.
decided to to have a place where we can where it's quiet where there's nobody to make noise so we my family and I decided to clean up our site far from the village far from everybody so if you know when we are tired one one day when we are stressed now we go there and we clean up that place. It wasn't. It is not ours, though. It's still. It's the government property, but they let us go and clean it up. We're doing fine, you know. We're in paradise. Christmas Island. I call it paradise. Christmas Island, you know. Less crime over here. We know. We almost know everybody. I almost know everybody's name. Mundo. Mm -hmm.